Hey, this is Wes. In this video, we're gonna take a look at how to export models from ZBrush for use in Substance Painter. I'm going to show three options which showcase three different workflows that I like to use for exporting my content from ZBrush to Substance Painter. So let's jump in and take a look. Here I have my helmet object that I created in ZBrush. And this model is made up of multiple sub tools. Now, one of the key components to understand about exporting an FBX from ZBrush is that a material is going to be applied to each one of these subtools. And what that means when I import that FBX into Painter is that all of these subtools are going to be broken into materials or texture sets. Now, we can use this to our advantage by organizing our subtools to represent the materials that we want to work with once we're inside Substance Painter. The first option I want to walk through is organizing my subtools to represent the materials that I'm going to be working with in Substance Painter. So I have several subtools here. I'm going to start to merge these subtools down so that I have only three tools. So I'm just going to use the merge down functionality and you can see I'm just walking through my subtools here and just merging everything down. And now I have my three subtools, which will become texture sets once we get over into Substance Painter. Now, I use the Z Modeler brush to create this asset. So I'm working with my subdivision, or I have dynamic subdivision enabled that you can see here. So the next step here is I'm going to go ahead and set the subdivision level, and I'm going to bake that into the geometry. So in this video, I'm not going to be covering baking a normal map from a low to high res mesh inside of Substance Painter. That would actually take an entire video in and of itself. So that's something I can showcase at a later date. But for now, what I'm gonna do is just bake down this subdivision level right here into the geometry. So I'll do so by just coming over and just for you know demonstration sake, I'm gonna set this to a rather low. So this is like a medium level mesh. And so it's set to the number one smoothing level and then we'll hit apply. Let's come over to our next sub tool. I'm going to set this to a value of one and click apply. And then my last sub tool, same song and dance, subdivision one and hit apply. OK, so now we have our three sub tools. I've baked down my subdivision levels. Each one of these sub tools has a set of polygroups that are associated with it. And I'm going to use these polygroups to create an ID mask for use in any masking operations that I want to do inside of Substance Painter. So what I need to do is I need to take this poly group and I need to convert that into a poly paint, which is essentially vertex color. I can do that pretty quickly here in ZBrush. So I'm just going to use the command poly paint from poly groups. So I will select the tool and then just run the option here. So poly paint from poly groups. And let's do that one more time. And there we go. We now have my poly paint information I need. So now that I have merged my tools, I've set my subdivision level, and I have baked down my poly paint information, I can now go through the step of setting a scale or a scene scale for this object. And the reason I want to do that, it's not really needed, but the reason I like to do it is because I like to work with physical size with my substance materials and the physical size scale option within Substance Painter. So what we're going to do next is jump over to our Z plugins, and I like to use Scale Master. So here I'm just going to select one of my tools, my helmet, since that's the biggest tool. And I'm going to click on new bounding box subtool. And that is going to create for me a bounding box that encompasses the entire scene that I have. Now that I have that in place, and I want to make sure I have this subtool selected because the scale or the size that you set is dependent on the subtool. And this bounding box encompasses everything. So this is going to be perfect. So I have the subtool selected. We're going to click on set scene scale. And then here I'm presented with several options. So what I want to do now is just pick the option that best relates to the scale of this object. And I want to make sure that I stay inside of metrics. So what I'm going to do is just use centimeter here. And I can see that I have one, a value here that's going to give me 25.4 centimeter on the Y. And I know that when I created this object, that was roughly the size that I wanted it to be. So this is going to work out great. So we'll click this option here. Now, if you don't see an option here that matches the mesh scale in any way, what you can do is just pick anything just as long as it's close to the actual unit you want. For example, I'm working in centimeter and just click whatever it is. And then when you come over to this option for your X, Y, and Z axes, you can enter the specific value you want in one of these axes to uniform scale. And now just to make sure everything is scaled correctly, I'm going to resize my subtool and I'm going to just make sure that this all option is enabled so it will just resize all my tools. So let's click on resize subtool and you can see it's going through the process and it's done that in my scene. 
I no longer need the bounding box uh, subtool, so let's delete that guy. And here we go, we have everything in place. Let's turn off transparency. And then I can come back here to my set scene scale, and now I can get an idea of what this new generic unit size is. So for example, let's come over to the helmet and set my scene scale. It's giving me this generic readout, and in my Y, it's 254. This generic unit is, is really approximately close to millimeters, so I can tell that this is correct. So I know this is gonna work. Now, something else I can do is I have centimeter selected, and I can click on sliders to subtool size, and you can see that that's just gonna give me that readout. If I click on millimeter, and then I click on sliders to subtool size, there is where we're getting that 254. Like I said, that generic unit is more close to a millimeter. All right, let me jump back here to my centimeters. And now all I need to do is just export out this geometry. There's lots of ways that we could do that from ZBrush. I'm using ZBrush 2022. So what I'm gonna do is just export to unit scale. And I wanna make sure that my unit scale is set to centimeter. So we'll click on export to unit scale. And I'm going to select helmet and make sure that my save as type is set to FBX and then click save. And here is where I can go through and just set all of the options that I want. So pretty much I wanna make sure that I'm gonna export all. Uh, I use Maya Y up, make sure that smoothing normals is enabled here. And then you have a couple options at the bottom. So you have this export smoothing levels, which can be pretty good. So earlier I went on ahead and just froze or baked down my subdivision levels, but I could just enable this option here. Now, the reason I'm not doing that is because I have found that after I set my scale and then if I make a change like merge my subtool, free subdivision, or even create my poly paint from poly groups, it tends to mess up the scale internally somehow. So I usually do those operations in my file and then the scale is set for the absolute last thing before I export. And then I do not need to worry about this exporting smoothing levels. Now you also have this option, which is pretty helpful called export polygroups as materials. So another way that we could work is we could have, you know, a single subtool and we could organize our material scene based on our polygroups. And I used to use this option a lot, but uh, you know, lately I haven't been using it at all. I kind of just have preferred to, to work this way where I'm managing my scene based on my subtools and then just setting my poly paint from poly groups so that I can just bake that as a vertex color inside of Substance Painter. That's why I'm not using any of these two options, but they're there in case you needed them. Okay, everything's set, let's just export. And now ZBrush is gonna export this out to an FBX that I can take right into Substance Painter. Here I have Substance Painter open, and let's import that object that I just exported from ZBrush. So for my file, I'm going to select my helmet, document resolution, I'll start that at 2048. I'm not going to be using the UV tile settings in this particular instance, so let's just jump right down to the auto unwrap. So I need to create UVs to work in Painter, and I'm gonna let Painter handle all of that work for me. Auto unwrap is enabled, let's hit the options here, and you can see there's options for my seams, UVs, and packing, and there's two options. We have generate only missing data or recompute all. So I'm gonna switch this to recompute all. For the margin size, I'll leave it at default, and then here for the orientation, we have two options. You have a line with 3D mesh, and then you have unconstrained. Unconstrained is good for more organic type meshes and it's uh, a bit more optimized when it comes to actually packing the UVs. Whereas Align with 3D Mesh is better for hard surface objects, but it's not as optimized when it comes to packing the UVs. Here for this particular object, I'm gonna leave this at Align with 3D Mesh. Now I'm going to make sure that I have my optimization settings enabled for avoid elongated UVs and create fewer seams. Now, if we take a look at my physical size, we can leave this at the default state here for the meshes file size, because again, we did that scaling inside of ZBrush. However, you do have this option, which I think is really cool if you need to set some type of custom unit scale. For example, if we wanna set a specific ratio for a generic unit to something in say centimeters. So this is all set up, let's click okay, and let's let Substance Painter create our mesh and unwrap our UVs. Now you can see the helmet has been loaded into Substance Painter and for the texture set list, we have our three texture sets which correlate to those three subtools that we had been working with in ZBrush. Let's take a quick peek at the UVs. So here we can see the UVs for the helmet, the, the strap holder and rings have all been created for me thanks to Substance Painter. So now I'll jump back to my texture set settings and let's quickly bake a few mesh maps. 
So I'm gonna set my output size to 2048, and I'm just going to be baking my world space, ID, ambient occlusion, curvature, and also my bent normals and position. Okay, so with these enabled, I do just need to make one tweak here to the ID. Now, for the color source, we're going to click this drop down and choose vertex color. When we created our poly paint from poly groups in ZBrush, we essentially just added vertex color data. And Substance Painter will bake that to an ID map with our color source set to vertex color. So I want to apply the setting to all of my texture sets. So I click apply to all and let's just bake the selected texture sets. Now Painter's gonna go through this baking process and here you'll be able to see the final result once this is finished. The baking has finished, let's click OK, and here is the bake. Really quick, I'm gonna jump over here to my shader settings and I'm going to enable that bent normal. Gives me a better quality result here in my viewport. And let's take a look at how we can now apply a material based on that ID mask. So I'm going to apply a material here just to the helmet and I'm going to use one of these default just materials that ship with Painter just for demonstration purposes. So now that I have my ID, I can hold down the control key, left click and drag and you'll see now I can actually drag this material onto any of the IDs that started from those initial polygroups that I set inside of ZBrush. So I'm going to place this material onto the helmet itself and now I have that material applied. Here we have a mask and that mask was generated from my ID mask. And because we set up our physical scale, what I can do is jump over here to my projection, set this to try planar. And for the scale option, let's set it to physical size. And I know that the physical size setting of that material is going to be set appropriately to the physical size of my actual object. In the second option, I'm going to showcase using a single subtool and then using UDEMs or UV tiles within Substance Painter. So what I'll do really quick is just jump over here to my Z plugins and I'm going to come over to subtool master and I'm going to use merge. Here I'm going to make sure that I preserve existing polygroups and I'm just going to go ahead and delete my extra subtools. Click OK. And so here we have a single subtool. Just as before, I'm going to enable my dynamic subdivision and set this to a smoothing level of one and click apply. So that'll give me my base subdivision baked in. And also you can see that I have my poly groups here and I need to convert that to poly paint. So here I'll use that same option, poly paint from poly groups. And once again, I'm gonna pop over to scale master. Let's create a new bounding box tool here and we are gonna set our scene scale. It should all be pretty much the same. So we're gonna go with that same 25.4 centimeter. And then I'm going to resize all of my subtools. Okay, that is set, we'll hit delete. And now I'm ready to export. So I'm going to make sure that I'm exporting here with my centimeter units, export to unit scale. And I'm just going to overwrite that helmet FBX. We're gonna export all, make sure smooth normals is enabled, Maya Y up and leave the other options off and click OK. So now we're, ZBrush is gonna export this FBX and once again, we'll take that into Substance Painter and I'll show you how to set this up so that we can use a UV tile workflow. So once again, here we are in Substance Painter and I'm gonna grab that helmet FBX. Let's set our document resolution to 2048. Now in this case, I am going to enable use UV tile workflow. And I'm going to use the option here, preserve UV tile layout per material. Now, what I'm gonna do is come over here to my auto unwrap, which is already enabled and we'll click options. And now that we're using UV tiles, we have this really cool option here, which is, allows us to set the number of UV tiles. So not only will Substance Painter unwrap our mesh, but we'll also pack our UVs into tiles. This is really a great option for optimizing our meshes as well as increasing our textile density. I actually really prefer using this workflow or this option the most. All right, so I'm just gonna leave everything as is, click OK, and let's click OK once more. And now Substance Painter is gonna go through the process, create my UV tiles, and unwrap the mesh. The helmet's been loaded in here to Substance Painter and I have one single texture set that I'm gonna be working with. Now the name of the texture set is being derived from the name of the subtool inside of ZBrush. So of course you can always rename that. And here underneath of that texture set, you can see that I have my six UV tiles. 
Let's take a look at the UVs and here we can see the actual layout. Everything is looking pretty good and I'm happy with these results. So now if we want, we can come over here to our texture set settings and I can bake my mesh maps. So I'm gonna go ahead and set this up just as I did before. And for that ID, my color source, I wanna make sure that I set that to vertex color. And now I'm going to bake my selected sets. Substance Painter is gonna go through and you can see that it's baking across all of the UDEM tiles. Okay, so that process is finished and I am gonna jump over here to my shader settings, enable my bent normal. Let's take an example material. I'm just gonna use that aluminum once again and I can hold down control, left click and drag. And just as before, you can see that my ID map, which is derived from those poly groups, is now available for me just to drag and drop my material. So here we'll drag and drop it onto the helmet. And now we have one single layer stack. We have our mask. Let me jump over here to the actual projection settings, set this to triplanar and set it to physical size. Everything is set up and working just as it was previously. However, this time we're working with a single texture set. We're working with UV tiles. And once again, we're using that ID map to generate the masking that we're going to be using here in Substance Painter. In this third option, we're gonna look at exporting an OBJ file with a single material and multiple sub tools. To save time, I've already applied the subdivision levels to each one of these sub tools. Now, in this case, I am not going to be working with my polypaint information, but the main issue being that when I export, the polypaint information is not supported. However, because I have these separated subtools, I'm going to use the geometry masking feature inside of Substance Painter to do the masking work for me. So in this case, I would organize or break up my mesh into multiple subtools so that I can easily mask layers as well as hide mesh parts once I'm inside a Substance Painter. I've also already set up the scene scale using Scale Master as I showed in previous sections of this video. So for the export, I am going to come over here to the 3D Print Hub. This is going to allow me to export the OBJ file that's going to work with a single material and multiple sub tools. So what I'm gonna do is click this update size ratio and I'm presented with an option for millimeters or inches. Like I said, I already set up my scaling so my millimeters is set correctly and that's gonna to convert to 10 inches on the Y, which is the exact size of this helmet. However, I wanna make sure that I stay in millimeter because Substance Painter's working in centimeter, and when I set my conversion for my physical size, I'm going to be able to easily convert from millimeter to centimeter. So let's click this millimeter option, and I can see that my size ratios are updated here, which is good. Now, I'm going to come over to my bounding box options and make sure that I uncheck or disable move bounding axis to origin. I don't need that. And you'll notice here that I have my export options. Polypaint is enabled, but ZBrush does let me know that the exporting of these colors is not supported in the OBJ file format. Okay, so other than that, we're good to go. I can export my OBJ. And I'm just gonna overwrite this one that I've saved previously. Yes, okay. And now ZBrush is exporting this OBJ file for me to use once we get inside a Substance Painter. So once again, we're back in Substance Painter. I'm going to select the helmet. We have our document resolution set to 2048. In this case, I do want to use my UV tile workflow. And that is because I'm going to have a single material and if I do that unwrap for the helmet with a single material, it's gonna pack all the UVs into that one single zero to one space for that material. And that will end up giving me a pretty low texel density. So if I use the UV tile workflow, the parts of the helmet are gonna be much more optimized because I'm gonna be using separate UV tiles and I'll have a lot better quality because of the higher texel density. So yes, use UV tile workflow. For the auto unwrap, let's look at our options. Once again, I'm just gonna leave all of this at default, same as what we covered in the previous section. We'll click okay. Now, here's where I'm going to make a change for my physical size because I know that this is using that generic unit from ZBrush, which is pretty much a millimeter. So I'm going to set a custom scale in this case. And it's one unit is going to equal 0.1 centimeters. And I click okay. Substance Painter is now creating my project. It's gonna go through that process of unwrapping and creating my UV tiles. So once again, I have the helmet loaded here in Substance Painter. 
I've gone ahead and created all of the bakes that I need minus that ID map because we're not going to be working with that. So I'll bring your attention here to the texture set list. We now have one single material that's coming from that OBJ file. And I also have my six UV tiles that I indicated in the unwrap options. So now let's take a look at just applying a demo material. I'm going to use that aluminum once again. We'll just drag and drop that here to my layer stack. So for the masking here, like I had mentioned, I want to use the geometry mask. So that's an option here on the layer. I'm going to click my geometry mask. And then if I open up my properties, you can see here that I have a mask type and I can mask based on the UV tiles. But if I click this drop down, I also have mesh names. Now you'll see that I have all of these individual sub tools as mesh name parts here inside a substance painter. This is really cool. Now the only now the downside is it doesn't retain the sub tool name. It's just these generic IDs that's showing up, but no problem. I can always just mouse over things and apply what I want. So here I'll hold down the control key, left click and drag, we'll just unmask everything. And then I'll single click here on the helmet. And you can see that quickly masks based on this mesh part that I had created as a sub tool inside of ZBrush. I have these actual snaps here. I could have broken those out as well as the rim around the helmet itself. I could have broken those down into additional sub tools. But for the most part, you can see how this masking operation is working pretty well. So once this is set, I can come out of the geometry mask. Let's go back to our properties again. I'll go into triplanar projection and set this to physical size. And here you can see that physical size setting is working just as it was in previous sections of this video. Now, because we are working with the geometry mask, it's also pretty cool that I can use this option here at the top, which is which allows me to hide or ignore excluded geometry. So if I click this button, you can see that I can now quickly hide all of the other mask parts that are inside the geometry mask, which is the mesh parts that are hidden or excluded, we'll say. And this gives me a really cool option to be able to come into here and either paint or work with this layer and I can hide and unhide just different pieces of geometry. That's another benefit of being able to work with the geometry mask. So that's going to close out this video. I hope you found these techniques useful. It really comes down to how you want to work with your scene inside a Substance Painter. Do you want to work with a single material or multiple materials? Do you want to be able to use multiple sub tools? You can generate IDs from Polypaint. Also, do you want to work with UVs or UVs with UDEM tiles? Hopefully this video gives you the information you need to decide what works best for your project. Thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you next time.